Welcome to lesson three of learning HTML. In this um, class today, we'll be linking our login and sign up, and then we'll be adding the learning HTML and CSS title, and then we will see maybe about adding the background to nav. Um, let's first see how long these two take before we will be able to dive into this one. Uh, anyways, uh, let's go into our code, and then um, as you probably noticed, I have blown, blown up my code a little, little bit here. Uh, that would be a little easier to see rather than being how small it was before. Uh, so to create a link, what we're going to do is called a href equals colon colon and close it and then close the a tag. Uh, anyways, um, with, within this href tag, and I'm honestly not quite sure what it stands for, um, this is where we would link something. So say, for example, if we wanted to go to Yahoo, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.yahoo.com and save. And then go ahead and refresh. And, oops. That's weird. I said that. Anyways, um, so now it saves. Uh, sorry about that slight delay there. Um, there was a style being applied there. There's something the main sheet needed to be saved. There's some reason uh, it wasn't working when it showed up. Anyways, um, well, this comes with excellent points of, uh, as I just said before, um, the HTML document will have certain styles built into it. Well, it does have one for the A tag. Is by default, it will create it where it creates it to be blue and underlines it, and then it makes the mouse be a pointer. Um, this is just basically the default style to a link. It's recognized as a link. It's universally, almost anybody recognizes, okay, this is a link that's going to click somewhere. Hence the reason why the style is applied through the browser. Uh, just to make sure our Yahoo link worked, let's go ahead and click it. And voila, Yahoo does come up. Let's go back because we're not interested in going to Yahoo. Um, so let's apply the link now back to sign up. Go ahead and add some spaces. Let's remove the Yahoo link. And then something that I'm going to do is I'm going to add what's called a hash a pound numerical sign. Um, this is just something I personally use um, when I'm creating a link because that way when I save it and then I can test it this way because I'll click on it and I can, I'll can i see the uh, pound sign within here, which this one's already shown up, but just to make the point again. Go ahead and go to the actual link, hit, pound, hit the link, and then the pound sign just come in. Uh, so now what we're gonna do now is we're going to change this back to white and remove the underline. And to do that, we are going to go into our CSS. We're gonna copy our login sign up ID or whatever you may name it. Go ahead and a couple spaces, pound, a. And then, so what this means is this is going to basically say that uh, it's going to look into login, sign up, and then it's going to see any a, a slash links you can find and apply the following rule. Uh, the reason why you want to do this is um, if you know that, okay, I'm going to apply to this certain scope. I don't want to go outside the scope. Well, this is going to be a way of doing it. Now, if I wanted to, uh, I wanted to stylize all links, I would do this. This would, uh, any link that comes up with this HTML document would have whatever rules I define within here, but I, I don't want to get that too generic. I want to get a little more specific. Uh, but a point I wanted to mention, this doesn't always have to actually have to be a link. It can be another ID, it can be a class. Um, a good example is say, um, everything is following a wrapper tag, but say if I want to test for within, uh, within the wrapper tag uh, for a style, so I can do, I could just like this, and then this would this would work also. So this would say, okay, first anything, the first uh, has to be within the wrapper, and then it has to have the idea of login sign up. Uh, if it meets those two arguments, then apply the following style. If not, then uh, skip over it. Uh, but what we're interested in is, is stylizing the link. So what we want to first do is change the color back to white. And then we want to use what's called text decoration and say none. And then this will 
uh, remove the underline, so I can hit save, we'll hit refresh, and then voila, the login and sign up look the exact same way they did before we linked them. Um, but something that I've always been keen on and I try to, to teach others is, I mean, that it looks good, it works operationally, but it doesn't really give good sign when someone's humming over it. Um, and it's something that it's been adapted by many different developers for myself is you will create, uh, you will have the underline come back when you hover over one of the links. And then to do that, we are going to copy this, our login, sign up, and then a tag, and then we'll do colon hover. And then basically what this is saying is now with any link that's hovered within login, sign up, applying the following rule. So we're going to do text, dec like text decoration underline, go ahead and save, and hit refresh, and voila. Uh, as we can see, our login and sign up are both applying the underlying style when you hover over them. So now any users who would be coming to the site when, okay, this is a link, um, it's now letting me know which I'm hover hovering over and it's gonna lead me somewhere uh, I see prefer to the sign up or login page, but this current time we don't have those, so we can't link to them. Um, so now what we want to move on to is making our learning HTML and CSS title within the center here. Um, and then beforehand I did actually look what the font size was, which is 40. Uh, sorry about that, but I figured it'd be good, it'd be good for me to do that uh, so that way I'm not wasting your guys' time. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create my rule for it. So um, learning HTML title. And I'm going to find, again, font size 40 pixel. And then um, I'm going to um, didn't do the uh, padding. Um, let me try 100 and then I can fix it from there. But um, I kind of mentioned, I mentioned padding top before, but uh, I don't know if how specific I really got into them. Um, one of the big things about, uh, one of the big differences is margin will apply to the outside element while padding will apply to the inside element. Um, easiest way to look at it is to use the actual browser. So I'm going to expect elements and then I go I get my elements and then I'm going to go into my metrics and then here it is. Um, this this is a great example of what I'm saying. So padding is most earned thing, and that the padding is border, and at the border is margin. Uh, the reason why I'm applying padding is if I applied margin, it would also push push this down because it's going to be within this wrapper div, and then I'm only interested in pushing down within the padding. And then what this means is I'm able to change numbers within here and it will adjust accordingly, but um, I just wanted to show it for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to close this, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna do a text line up center, so center the text, and go ahead and save. And then before I go on, I, wanted, I know I'm gonna have a font family of Arial for this. Um, I do know that originally we had it in the, is it login sign up background, but um, or maybe it's a login sign up ID. Anyways, um, I moved it to the wrapper ID. Uh, basically, what this means is anything that falls under the wrapper will have a font family Arial. Um, that way, if I know if I want to change the font family, I have to, or by default, I would have Arial instead of Times New Roman. Uh, we'll go ahead and go back to our code. Oop, before we do that, let's copy the rule. And we want to grab our login, login, enter, go ahead and create comments. So, title, edit, all right, so now we're going to put the div in there. As you probably wonder what I was doing here, what this is, is this, this actually stands for and. 
um, and ampersign. But the reason why I'm doing this is because Anne is actually a special character. And if you don't um, let it know that, okay, this is and it's going to, well, through your coding, if you like, if you're using Sublime Text here, it's going to show like this saying that, um, I mean, I know what you mean, but this may not be recognized by all the browsers. Uh, so that's the case where you would do this and then that changes purple, not recognizing as a special character. Um, I know there's, if you look it up, you can find a lot of different special characters. I don't remember by hearts. Uh, the ampersign is the one I remember the most. Um, but again, the biggest reason is if you don't use this, it's going to show those funky characters like that weird E and other stuff. Um, I mean, I, I just really don't know what it stands for, but um, basically it's just saying that I, I don't understand what this means as a special character, so I, I can't display it correctly. But this will display and correctly across platform to any other browsers. Um, so it's great. It comes up in this one. It may be actually maybe a little too high. Uh, let's look at the curve preview. Um, yeah, that's, that's 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 a little too high. But something I, I did notice is uh, I forgot to make it bold. Uh, so let's go back and do that in CSS. 100. All right, it's bold. And then let's go ahead and adjust the padding. Um, and the reason I'm doing this too is just to show again that this is the power of what um, Inspect Element can do, or Firebug, or um, Expect Elements, or no, that's the developer tool for IE, and I forgot what it was for uh, Safari, but I know it's um, I know it's in there. You just have to find it. It's not. It doesn't come by default. You have to activate it somehow, and you, unfortunately, I do have to look that up. Um, anyways. Um, so looking at it, this is in the key eye, key eye. Um, we see that's pretty, that's uh, a little bit, maybe a little bit more, maybe, let's say 40. Yeah, 40 is good. We don't, we don't make it too high. Um, yeah, so that's great. Um, I mean, honestly, if I was, if I was professionally doing this, like this was an actual site, I would actually use Chrome. I, oops, I'd actually use, um, my, uh, my Photoshop program, get an exact dimension of what the exact padding is. But for this case, um, I mean, ironing is, is suffice enough because, again, you're just building a site for yourself, learn how to do stuff, and you're not actually going to build this and have somebody pay you for it. Um, so, anyways, um, we'll go back to our code. Okay, so everything's looking great. So, I think at the time, I'm going to uh, stop. Um, like I said, I, I wanted to maybe get the navigation background in, but um, I figured it's good stopping points. Um, and then actually, I probably plan out tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to create no lesson. In that case, we will start the navigation at the background and then add some links to it. But um, again, I mean, add a link, uh, figure out how to stylize the link, create the hover states, and then figure out, um, figure it out. Uh, the font size getting again more comfortable with expect element other developer tools within your browsers to be able to make your job a lot easier is is always very good to, uh, to learn the basic stuff because of how much you you will use it uh, in your career if you choose to do this and I did actually notice that I spelled learning uh, wrong um, so that should be correct now oops and it didn't apply my style so. I will end on that note, and I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow. Have a good night.